Hey everyone, well this is pretty exciting. Mid Journey version 6 has been released and this is a pretty significant update over version 5.2 in terms of aesthetics and prompt understanding. We even have a few new features in version 6, although this is a beta release, so we are actually missing a few features as well. We'll get to that in just a minute. So today we're going to take a deep dive into version 6, looking at prompting. Of course, we're going to do some image comparisons and I've already got a few tips and tricks for you. Okay, let's dive in. The first thing you want to do is to make sure that you are running version 6. In order to do so, issue the command forward slash settings and then just choose Midjourney model v6. Alternatively, if you just want to experiment with version 6 and don't want to fully commit, you could always just add dash dash v6 to the end of any prompt and v6 will render that prompt. And while v6 is available on the Midjourney Alpha website, I know that not everyone has access to that yet, so uh, I'm just going to stick to Discord for today's video. As a major change with v6, prompting has changed. According to Midjourney themselves, prompting with v6 is significantly different than v5. You will need to relearn how to prompt. v6 is also much more sensitive to your prompt. Uh, you'll want to avoid junk keywords like award-winning, photorealistic, 4K, and 8K. Be explicit about what you want. According to Midjourney, it might be less vibey, but the model is much better at understanding what you're looking for. Per many of our previous versions, if you want the less opinionated, less heavily stylized version, use dash dash raw. Now, despite all of that advice, I still do stand by my mantra that there is no right or wrong way to prompt. There are, of course, efficient and effective methods of prompting, but even just taking something basic like toast and running that, you will end up with, you know, a very lovely image of toast. And taking that same toast prompt and adding a stylized 1000 to it gets us this beautiful heart stopper. Uh, I do like the fact that it's got the fried egg and the bacon on there, but it's on whole wheat toast, so, you know, it evens out. In general, I found that my standard prompt formula of medium, style, scene, action, modulate, parameters seems to be holding up pretty well. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on that. I did do an entire video on this that is linked down below. So kicking off with an image that, I don't know, is kind of vaguely inspired by a made for Apple TV movie. Uh, this is cinematic scene, dramatic film, close up, a young fisherman on a boat and a young woman look longingly at one another in love, Northeast United States, rain falling at an aspect ratio of 2 1. Pushing in really shows where V6 shines. The detail in her skin uh, and the eyes, and in the hair in particular, that's something that I very much noticed. Uh, the hair looks a lot more realistic and detailed, right even down to sort of like the drops of rain that are in her hair and like on her jacket. It is interesting to note how much the new model is paying attention to your keywords. Uh, for example, just swapping out Northeast for Northwest gives us, well, this very attractive couple who very clearly have a Pacific Northwest vibe going on. And I'm super jealous of that hat. That hat is really, really cool. Although I am a little concerned about whatever's going on with this skin here. I think he's gonna need some kind of ointment or balm for that. I don't wanna to get too lost in the woods on prompting here. Again, I did a whole other video on that, but I did wanna say that as we're moving into this new model that does have a different prompting style, I do encourage you to play around with different ideas on prompting. Even just going fully minimal on your prompts can lead to some pretty interesting results. But by cranking up your stylized to, let's say 1000 and giving very minimal prompts like innovative, visionary, it's actually kind of cool, or other worlds, it really does give you an idea of what the model is capable of. Previous to the release of version six, I did hear some, I mean, I guess criticism that the jump in quality between version 5.2 and six was incremental compared to the jump between version five and version 5.2. But I do think that's kind of unfair and is fairly unfounded when you look at prompts back to back. So taking our old friend the man in the blue business suit walking down a city street in version 5.2 we get this which is solid it's an image that i've come to expect in version 5.2 slightly soft in terms of the image i just noticed that he's wearing like uh three tie clips as well for some reason maybe that's the fashion in whatever city he lives in meanwhile here's just one roll in version six uh maybe not the most compelling of images but again it's man in a blue business suit walking down a city street uh but overall you know it's it's much more dynamic it's just not as flat in terms of its composition 
I do feel that the character himself does have a little more personality to him. And just in terms of background details and sort of the world, there's just a lot more going on in this version six than there is in the 5.2 version. And if you really want to split hairs, well, here it is in V4. And look, I know that you're probably like, oh God, my eyes. Uh, I don't know, I still like V4. V4 is just super weird and kind of gritty and just dirty and grimy. I don't know, I love V4. Taking another one of the channel's recurring characters, the cyberpunk woman with white hair. Uh, this is Photograph, style by cyberpunk, woman with long white hair and combat armor, City Alley, Autumn Colors, fall day, an aspect ratio of 16.9. I know normally we run her in the winter because I think the first time I ran her, I said, you never see cyberpunk in the winter. And then a bunch of you commented with like the end of Blade Runner 2049, dummy. And I was like, ah. So my new challenge is cyberpunk in the fall. I do not think I've seen that. Anyhow, overall, I do think that she looks pretty great. There's some pretty heavy bouquet going on with the background that does mask, you know, kind of cyberpunk, but um, you definitely get a lot of those fall colors in there. Uh, and in terms of her costume and sort of character design, I think she looks really great. But the V6 version is kind of on another level. I mean, yes, you do kind of still get that bouquet background where you're not getting a lot of cyberpunk details, but as a character, she is definitely much sharper. She kind of has a lot more pose and attitude. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the hair is just so much more lifelike. If there is one trick that I definitely have noticed that V6 seems to favor, it is putting objects in the foreground uh, as with this leaf, you know, in front of our cyberpunk woman. It is a very subtle but very effective way of reinforcing the fact that your subject is actually present in that location. As a quick note, all of the images from today's video plus this PDF worksheet are available over on the Gumroad. It is completely free, although donations are always greatly appreciated. They really go a long way. I really, really do thank everyone who has donated previously. Moving on to our first major feature of version six, we have creative upscaling. And this one is pretty big. In order to use creative upscale, you of course must upscale. So going back to our uh, original example of just boring toast, by the way, um, I did cherry pick that earlier one. Um, in the initial role, there was just, we got toast on fire, which I guess is a way of making toast, right? Anyhow, once you've taken an upscale from your grid of four, you will then be presented with options to either upscale subtle or upscale creative. The toast, let's face it, is pretty boring and I wanted something more exciting. So we went with cinematic still, ultra wide angle, Godzilla rampaging through a modern city, building destruction, people running, Kaiju chaos at an aspect ratio of 16.9. I mean, that is pretty awesome. I mean, granted, we did not get scandalous Godzilla as we did a few videos back, but maybe that's for the best. So running an upscale subtle gives us this, which looks still fantastic. Uh, it, we've just pretty much just doubled our resolution. Not much else has changed, but you get some really cool details when you run an upscale creative. Um, as you can see, if we zoom in here, um, like our boy's face is definitely a lot more detailed than it was in the original upscale. Now that said, creative upscale can be a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, for example, in our initial image, we have a lot more like city destruction going on here, uh, more people running on the streets as well. Uh, and then in our creative upscale, although we get the better Godzilla face, uh, the building is much more intact. Uh, a solution to that, of course, because these images are very much the same, we can bring them into Photoshop or whatever image editor you like, stack them on top of one another and then just take an eraser and kind of, you know, blend in uh, our old areas of destruction. Which is kind of interesting, just by riding the opacity here, you can actually see how much creative upscale brings to the table. Huh, pretty cool. The other big feature is that we can now prompt for text in mid-journey, I mean, at least kinda. I mean, it works as well as it does in say Ideogram or any of the other AI image generators that give you text, maybe just a little bit better. And I do have a couple of tricks on that front. To have text appear in your image, you simply encapsulate that text within quotation marks. Uh, for example, here is a copy of Stephen King's The Gunslinger sitting on a table. This is an image that I tried to roll up previously in version 5.2, you know, obviously never got the text. So aside from the fact that it doesn't actually look like a copy of The Gunslinger, which is a much shorter book, the cover is not right, and I just noticed that it's The The Gunslinger. I mean, yeah, you got me, Mid Journey. Here's a film poster for a sci fi horror movie called The Inhuman, not The The Inhuman. Thank you very much, Mid Journey. Uh, yeah, uh, worked out pretty well on this one. And finally, a good old fashioned like and subscribe. Subtle, I know. And here's the thing, to get to that like and subscribe, we went through a lot of iterations. Here's another one that had a like and and subscribe. Uh, this one only had, well, this was actually not even, it was like to subscribe. And then ultimately it would get super frustrating when you would end up with like 
correct text, but then there would be something kind of janky going on with the image, like where this hair strand is kind of going through her uh, sunglasses. Now I can't say fully for certain, but I did feel like I was getting better results when I would either wait the text prompt as in uh, quotation mark, text and quotation mark, colon, colon, and then a wait of like two or three, or when I would use all caps across the text. That said, there were still, of course, a number of rerolls, so it could have been luck of the draw, but I do feel that those two commands did help in some way. Speaking of commands, yes, there are a number of commands that are not yet working in version six. Uh, the commands that currently are supported are aspect ratio, chaos, weird, tile. Well, it's right here. And the unsupported ones are our pan, our zoom, our very region in painting, uh, tuning and describe. Describe apparently does work. It's just describing from the V5 model. There is a new V6 describe coming out and I am super excited about that because describe is actually one of my favorite functions. Although I do want to point out, although we don't have very region or in painting, uh, very subtle and very strong have gotten very powerful in version six. Um, for example, here we have illustration style by blue and yellow, motorcycle in the forest at an aspect ratio of 16.9. And by issuing a very subtle on that and changing the keyword of motorcycle to van, we get this image, which is yes, a variation, not an in paint, but it looks really, really close. I think it was confirmed that when we were in painting in version 5.2, what we were actually doing was in painting with a newer model, which could obviously lead to some incongruencies in the image. But you know, now that it is version six to version six, it seems like it's functioning pretty well. So that's pretty much our deep dive into version six. Uh, I will of course be keeping an eye on all of the mid journey updates as they start rolling forward. And if you have a minute, you might want to check out this video, which um, kind of bombed on me in all honesty, but I thought it was a pretty good video with some pretty interesting stuff. So I'd uh, love it if you stop by and check that one out as well. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.